sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather unto me my saints, the Bible says, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Sacrifice here is beyond money. The sacrifice of your life, the sacrifice of your time, the sacrifice of your resources. Please pay attention. You will never be able to host certain levels of God's presence until your life becomes an embodiment of sacrifice. One scripture and then we'll pray. First Kings 18 from verse 17. First Kings 18 from verse 17. Please pay attention. This was Elijah. Thank you. Elijah and the prophets. Elijah and the prophets at Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. Next verse. And thou hast followed Baal. Now therefore send and gather me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of, you know, all of those people at Jezebel's table. Verse 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long shall ye halt be ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. 22. And the people answered him not a word. And Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Watch this. They are about to end the issue of who is God. And the proof is who is able to show up. But before then, he's talking of sacrifice. Give us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves. And cut it in pieces. And lay it on wood. And put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock. And lay it on wood. And put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire. Hmm. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. The God that answers by fire. Let that God be God. 25. Now watch what happened. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself and dress it first, since ye are many, and call upon the name of your God. Put no fire on that. Uh -huh. And they took the bullock which was given them, listen, and they dressed it and called upon the name of Baal from morning even till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made now watch this notice what began to happen to them as their desperation grew the power of sacrifice in invoking presence and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey what a god or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And they cried aloud. Now, when they found out their crying could not call him, they switched into sacrifice, the last card that brings presents. They caught themselves. Can you imagine? They knew that there was something, there was a relationship between invoking the presence of a spirit and sacrifice the bible says they cut themselves after their manner with knives and latchets 
until the blood gushed out of them. And it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Elijah is about to call God but he knew there was a timing. The time of the evening sacrifice. There was no voice. There was nothing. Next verse. And Elijah said unto the people, Now you come near unto me. They came near and he repaired the altar of the Lord. Next verse. And Elijah took 12 stones. You know the story. But he allowed them to play around doing everything they did. And there was an exact timing. The Bible calls it the time of the evening sacrifice. There is a relationship between sacrifice and the presence of God. And Solomon loved the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3. And he offered a thousand bond offerings. God did not send an angel. He came himself. He said your sacrifice has brought me here. What would I do for you? And then he says I need an understanding heart. And he said I will give you what you have asked for. And I will also give you what you did not ask for. Sacrifice sacrifice of your time sacrifice of your life are we together now romans chapter 12 and verse 1 says i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice a sacrifice yet is not dead he calls it a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god and he calls it your reasonable act of service some versions will say your act of worship. When your life becomes a sacrifice. You provide the fire. Now provide a sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fire does not come upon nothing. His presence will not come upon nothing. You must become that living sacrifice. You want to carry His presence. You must become a sacrifice. Your entire life. Not just your hand. Not just your songs. Sacrifice of your resources. This is for you, oh God. There is nothing I cannot give you. Sacrifice of your time. You own my life and you own the times therein. Please listen to me. When you commit to a life of sacrifice, in fact, we know this instinctively and by experience that everything of value comes at a cost. There is nothing that is of value that is free or cheap. Even if it is free to you, it was only paid by someone who is not you. The majestic presence of God the miracle walking presence of God, the burden lifting presence of God, the life destiny altering presence of God will not rest upon you until your life becomes a living sacrifice. The sacrifice of your time, the sacrifice of your life, the sacrifice of your resources, everything You've heard me say the price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is all of you. Not some of you. All of you. Everything. You combine these factors together and you're already on a journey to host superior dimensions of his presence. Your love for God. Your committal to please him. An atmosphere of prayer and worship. 
And then, a life of sacrifice. Sacrifice to see kingdom come. Your resources, your life, your times. It's impossible to follow this protocol and not carry divine presence. Everything that you have belongs to him. And it must be a delightsome sacrifice. You give God your singing, you withhold your money is hypocrisy. If he's Lord, he must be Lord of everything. You give God your money, you withhold your worship and your heart is hypocrisy. He must be Lord of everything. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, in as much as it is true that when we seek God more than the need to solve our problems, we seek Him because we love Him. But he's benevolent enough to not leave our problems to go back with us. This is the God that we serve. That more than solving problems, our desire is to love him and to live for him. However, he said, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts, if he's a faithful and irresponsible father, he will not just come to watch you roll before him and then go back the same way and leave you. No way. This is about the most accurate representation of our burdens, our challenges. I may not have the time to prophesy. I may not have the time to minister to people individually. Even if I do, we see in part and we prophesy in part. But this is a representation the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. Scripture declares, it says, but in everything, in everything, the cure for anxiety, be anxious or careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known. Don't just assume, let it be made known. And in this second service, we have come to say, Lord, we love you, but there are issues in our lives. Lord, we love you, but we live in times that require your power. Lord, we love you, but do not let my children continue this way. I love you, but my health, I'm holding a death sentence while I praise you. Only the living can serve you. Jehovah Jireh, He's my provider. Your grace is sufficient for me. Jehovah, my provider. Your grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He shall put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. So in the next few minutes that we have, I want you to sit back and watch the wonder walking God. The one who will not leave you the way you came. The one who in one moment, one moment, one moment can turn the captivity of years. This is not just a preacher's talk. The God we serve is a mighty God. When you do your own part, then you step back. And then he will show you that he's the mighty one. What is this that ailed thee? Lord, years of pain. A medical reports that will not bow to your name. 
See, the woman with the alabaster box was not just breaking. She did not just break a box of spikenard, a year's wages. No. She took all her shame and put it in that alabaster box. She took all her frustrations. She did not just break the jar with perfume. She carried her everything like you have brought it before the Lord. And when he received it, everything that represented shame and reproach in her life rolled away. We are going to pray. But the few minutes that we have, especially for the women and by extension all of us and for those following online, honestly the power of God is real. When the presence of God shows up, he shows up with his power. There is no president that comes alone, even if he wants to visit you. There is no governor that comes alone. Any, even senior executives, they move with a convoy. Those convoys have all kinds of provisions. They may have a medical team working with them. They have all kinds of systems of correspondences. They have all kinds of things. Will God really come and come alone? Oh no. He comes with his lifting. He comes with open doors. He comes with keys. He comes with a bomb that is in Gilead. That's why I told you, just calling those things one by one. There are times, imagine that you want to call the commissioner for this, or the minister for this, or this and that. You want to call the chief security officer. You can call them all, but look at that burden. Just call the president. When you call the president or you call the topmost executive in the capacity of his office, all the rest are mandated to follow him. They will follow him and they will come together. Is that true? Yes. If the president or any senior government executive or company executive is coming in the capacity of their office, they will come with the full entourage. And he is here. With the angels here with his spirit here with his power to reach and to bless now whilst you're seated in one minute I'd like you to just pray and say father turn my life around change my destiny please open your mouth in one minute begin to mention the specific things Some of you are praying for your children. Some of you is a health issue. Financial issues. Legal issues. Let's pray. You are the covenant keeping God. Keep praying. Ah. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You are you. Covenant keeping God. Yes, he still wipes tears. The covenant keeping 